Hello everyone and welcome to this Object 2 VR4 webinar. It's our first in a series of webinars. My name's Martin and I'm going to be joined today by... Hi there, my name is Karen and I am helping in the background with um, the Q&A. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, if you have a question, please use the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. And that's where we're, we'll be looking uh, for your questions. And uh, Martin will stop every once in a while uh, to uh, open up the question board. And uh, so we can wait until then to add your questions. And uh, please keep your questions relative to the topic, uh, which is quite general today. So I guess um, I guess it's a free for all in questions today. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll that's good. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> okay. Well, then um, I'll see you later and uh, enjoy. Thank you, Karen. Right. Okay. So, Object 2 VR 4. Well, for those that are not familiar with it, Object 2 VR is a product image um, uh, display software. It's, it rotates and you can do things like what we're seeing here. In fact, today's webinar is we will be building this project. Um, it allows you to have hotspots where you can open up various things. And yeah, so these are all the features that our new Object 2 VR 4 will have. So this is what we're aiming to build. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead. So first and foremost then, let's open up Object 2 VR and let's have a quick look. So I'm just gonna open this up to, um, well, well, we'll open to the full screen, but initially what we'll see here is our welcome screen. The welcome screen allows access to, you know, uh, various things, new projects, and we also have a live feed here from our blogs. Right, I'm gonna close this, double click, just to get it into full screen so we can see what the software looks like. Right, so starting off then, we have a big viewer in the middle. These are, this will show the individual images and we have our various panels around the outside. We have various little buttons. I'm not gonna go into great detail about everything because this is a getting started. So what we wanna do is throw some images in and create an output and just get you all going. But one of the things I will say whilst we're in this particular uh, screen is the properties panel. Um, this properties panel is dynamic. As we work with Object 2 VR, you'll see that this panel will change with um, uh, to whatever you're working with, be it hotspots or outputs or whatever. Okay, so that said, what we're gonna do now is go and grab some images. So, um, let's uh, do that by, you. we can either use the add image button. So when we click this, um, it will open up the uh, open um, file dialog box, um, or what we're going to do is I'm gonna double click and just reduce the size. Because uh, what you can also do, let's have a look at some uh, images. You can select all your images and literally drag them into what we call the light table at the bottom here. And the light table is what stores all of your um, images that you're going to be working with. So if we select one, you can see them rotating in the viewer. Right. Um, we're actually using Object 2 VR Lite today, as it says at the top of the window. We do have various uh, two, two other versions. We have Object 2 VR um, Pro and Studio. We're going to be looking at light, um, and what we'll do is later on um, have a look at the differences between uh, Pro and Studio in other webinars. But today, as I said, this is a getting started. Right, so we've added all our images, as we've done. In the Properties panel, you can see that it's given us the, uh, the, the, the dimensions, if you like, of the object. So we've got 18 images. I'm gonna select the outputs, uh, output button, so add output, select web. And what I'm gonna do is just create the output by selecting the cog button here. So click OK. It's gonna ask me to save the file. I'm gonna save it to the same directory as all the images, which is its default. And you can see it chugs away. And when it's finished, it opens up the output. And there it is. So there is our 18 images. And as we move the mouse side to side, you can see we can scroll around. Okay, right, so um, what I will say with this is the scrolling isn't quite how I'd like it. If you look at the mouse, I'm gonna drag it from right to left, and ideally I would like it to go clockwise, but it's moving 
anti-clockwise. So that takes us to our first little panel, which is going to be the properties panel. Now, as I said, this uh, properties panel or the image properties panel, this properties panel is dynamic. So when I click into the output, you'll see the output properties. When I click into the image, we'll see then the properties or the projects um, panel or properties. So I'm going to click here, um, this button, which is viewing parameters. And what I want to do is you can see control type and it says the horizontal and at the moment it's selected wrap. So it'll go through the images and wrap round again. All right. Now what we have here is another little checkbox for to, for to reverse that. So let's just select that, click the export button again or create an output. And now when I move the mouse, it now rotates the object the direction that I want to. Okay. All right then, um, so there we go. That's the first lot of images in. Um, we've, we've created an output. We've also corrected or, or corrected the way that the mouse interacts with it. Now by default, Object 2 VR uses multi-resolution and it allows zoom. And what does that mean exactly? Well, when we zoom in, if you've got nice big clear images, it keeps that um, uh, that, that high resolution when you zoom in and out. When you zoom out, it's a lower res. When you zoom in, it uses a higher res. So basically, it can rotate um, very, very quickly when zoomed out. And what we do as a default is auto move mode. What that means technically is when we've zoomed out, we can just rotate the object like that. And when we start to zoom in, it then automatically changes to move mode. All right. Now we will cover this later on uh, within the webinar when we add um, some other uh, uh, add some skins to this but here we go so this is basically the object built and uh, corrected with the mouse so i know it's a little bit too soon because we've actually just blasted quite a lot through the first section um uh, so i'm actually going to open that up to the q a uh, to to um uh, uh karen and say do we have any questions on that because there was a lot happening there that we just we blew through quite quickly, but you know, have we any questions? Hi, um, so far, no. And I was just wondering to everybody out there, can you see the chat? Can you see the webinar chat? <laughs> I think, oh yeah, uh, Jan has been able to write, so that's good. Uh, no, there's no questions just yet. I wanted to write and uh, remind everybody to use the Q and A tab if you have a question and uh, so far, uh, no questions. Excellent. All right, absolutely excellent. Right, okay then. So, just to recap, we've got our output. Let's go back to Object 2 VR. And under the output panel, um, you'll see that we can add what we call a skin. So again, people not familiar with the software, um, a skin is basically an overlay over the object where you can have buttons to control things. Now. Object 2 VR is going to be coming with a few skins. Here we go. So if, as an example, if we have a look at the feather box, let's create an output and see what this looks like. As you can see, we've got some buttons on the side here. We've now got a full screen button that we can enter and exit. Um, when we do things like add hotspots later, they'll be styled very similar to this. Um, but also, which is important as well, is that all of the skins come with what we call a skin configuration. So if we select um, if, or if, 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 if we select a skin without any config, so this is, let's have a look, this one, you'll see that the, so it's, so it's blank, you'll see there's no configuration. But if the skin has a configuration, you'll see that the button becomes active. And when we select this, we can do, we can customize this particular skin. So here you can see we've got um, the accent color and we can do things like add a controller. So let's select the add a controller and create an output. And there you can see we've got our left and right buttons. So we've added a controller. Um, let's just do something uh, like, I don't know, let's just change the accent of it. So let's go to black and set that to a gray so that probably matches the the object that we're dealing with so let's click yes and here you can see we've got the accent there so we've now changed the button colors to gray so that's that's this particular skin um the feather box let's just open that up um we've got the feather orb let's see what that looks like i'm not going to go through every single skin but the idea is you get to see what oh, see what's happening um so 
here um, we've got the social buttons we've got the left and right and we've got our cog here for going full screen and this one's actually got an auto rotate so that's what this comes with all right and again if we have a look at the config you've got some other bits that you can change there so let's just click the default to bring back the accents um, and on this particular skin we've got keyboard accessibility which allows you to use tabbing and things like that okay so let's um, have a look at another skin uh, let's go to Neto I think we'll stick with that uh, click OK and have a look what this skin does right this particular skin we have a plus and minus for the zoom obviously we can use the mouse zoom but what this skin brings us is um, the ability that we've got the plus button when we zoom in and you'll see that the minus button to zoom out becomes active and as soon as I zoom back out again it then becomes inactive so this particular skin detects you know how far we're zooming in and out so if we zoom all the way in you'll see that it it grays out and we've got a reset button there when we click the reset it sends it back to its normal size and also which the, what, what the skin is doing here is it's saying what mode we're in so when we're fully zoomed out we're in rotate mode all right and when we zoom in it then turns into this drag mode but what we could do with this skin is click the button and now it's rotate whilst we've zoomed in and we can carry on with that or if we want to just click the button and basically drag the image around so I can click the reset button and that takes us back okay um, so that's basically um, uh, the, 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 the skin um, right okay so what I want to do now is have a look at the hotspots um, the reason being because obviously if you've got an object it's spinning around but you might have certain items that you want to highlight now now that I've opened up object 2 VR to its full screen what I can do here is go to fit and that makes my viewing a little bit uh, larger we can obviously go a bit larger but then it starts to crop so fit will probably be the best fit if you like for this particular image right so getting on to hotspots um, I'm going to select hotspots these are the hotspot icons we have two types of hotspots we have point hotspots which are a little mark or, or a dot in the, in the in the image that will go around with the image and we also have polygons polygons are basically and you, you can define an area and make that do something we're not going to cover polygons today because that needs some more interaction with skins which is going to be the next webinar that we'll do but so what we'll do today is add a point hotspot now to do that we select point hotspots there we go and what that does is open up our point hotspot list here now defining a hotspot or, or adding a hotspot is a two-step situation or process first you need to define the hotspot uh, and then what you do is add the instances of the hotspot to the image because not forgetting that the image is rotating okay so um, what we'll do then is here is we'll manually define one and then after I've done that I'm going to show you how to do it even simpler now why, why, don't, why don't I show you the simple way first well because the simple way um, jumps over a couple of steps so if you've done something wrong and you've always used the shortcut method you probably won't know what you've done so if I show you exactly how to define a hotspot first then you can see you know if something goes wrong where to go back to correct it if you've done that so with the hotspot selected we have the hotspot list I'm going to select point hotspot and we're going to create it here the properties panel as I said it's dynamic it now shows the properties of the point hotspot this particular hotspot is going to be one that opens a pop-up image all right now with object 2 VR 4 and the default skins we have predefined certain pop-ups already so you don't have to worry about it too much the only thing you have to do is tell the hotspot what type it's going to be so in this case I'm going to select image all right now I'm going to give the image hotspot a title so when we hover over the point in the output we'll see its title so this is going to be um, under seat under seat storage and we're going to use this open file dialog uh, 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 um, icon to go and get my image and the image is going to be this one so under seat storage I'm going to select OK and we've now defined it okay so this is the point hotspot defined 
what we now need to do is add it to the images that we want it to appear in. Now that's the key and why we define it because we now can choose which images do we want that hotspot to appear in and not. Well, the underseat storage is, is at the back of the vehicle or the scooter. So what I'm gonna do is select, say this image, um, and I'm gonna just double click to add the point. And now what I can do is just use a keyboard button um, to move the scooter around, double click, and just keep adding the points only to the images that I want to view. We've also got this little helper down here, this little button. If I click this, you can see where we added them in the previous images. The idea is, is you know, if I've accidentally moved it up there and we go to the next one, you can see that that jumps up. So that's, so that's gonna look a bit ugly on the output. So we can just drag that back down and we can just carry on. And we're gonna, I'm gonna try and keep a nice arc shape here. So going with an arc, there we go. So I'm just double clicking, adding the point hotspots only to the images that I want. Okay, so that's done as far as I'm concerned. That is all the only the images I want. Now, the good thing about this is if we select the point hotspot, um, you can see that in the light table, we've got the yellow surround. We've got a green one because that's the active image. If I select this one over here, you can see that all of these hotspots are yellow. Uh, rather not hotspots, but these thumbnails are yellow. And the reason being is because we've got uh, the hotspot highlighted, this is showing me which images have this particular hotspot, um, point hotspot. So if I had more point hotspots later on, um, we're gonna have hotspots at the front and at the side. Um, we can see exactly which images contain those hotspots. Right, so I'm gonna click the output, click uh, create output, click okay. And now when I rotate the scooter, when we come round to the first image, you can now see we've got our photo icon under seat storage, and when I click that, we get the pop-up picture. So that's our first point hotspot added, and that was, as I say, the long way round. And the reason why I wanted to do that was purely to show you that, you know, um, the steps that we were going through. So if I click on the point hotspot um, here, he says it changes to the hotspots properties. So we've de, oh, and I've just added a new one. Didn't wanna do that. So let's highlight that one. You can see that we've defined what it was, given it a title and grabbed the uh, image for it to show. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it there. Um, I'm not sure if there's any questions before I start adding more hotspots and carrying on with this. Uh, Karen, is, is there anything popping up I can't see? Uh, hi, yeah, we've got a few questions. Um, so, uh, Gabor, hi Gabor. Uh, he's asking if there's a guide or tutorial on how to take the photos that are being used here. Right, um, okay. Um, actually, that does remind me something I've actually skipped over and wanted to say. But I'll, I'll, I'll say that after the, after, after the questions, but go on. Uh, no, go, you can you can finish. You can. All right. Okay. Um, well, basically, um, good point about how we get the photos. The photos. This particular scooter, uh, it was shot on a rotating turntable, and what I wanted to um, uh, say, and I didn't, um, naughty me, was basically the when when these images were shot on a turntable. So this was shot on a mechanical turntable. Object 2 VR Studio, basically, long story short, you can connect a camera and a mechanical turntable, dial in what you want, click the go button, and it fetches everything for you. However, um, the turntable rotated in the wrong the wrong direction. Um, Object 2 VR is pretty much set up for objects rotating clockwise, but if it rotates counterclockwise while you're taking the images, this is why the image, um, when I was moving the mouse from side to side, the, the rotation was not with the mouse because um, we're assuming a clockwise so that's why i had to go into the viewing parameters and set um, the reverse so we are now playing the image sequence backwards like it was shot clockwise on the table but um but basically shooting these images um it can be so, so this is also the other thing as well i mean you said is there guides on how to shoot this it depends on what you want to use object 2 vr for now we're using this to show a, a, a scooter. We're rotating it around so people can see around the scooter. You don't necessarily have to rotate anything. 
as an example, a cabinet maker making a nice writing bureau may just take a static shot of that, but then take an image sequence of the lid opening or the doors opening. So the thing's not rotating, but what you're doing is you're moving the mouse, and then as you move the mouse, the doors are opening, the lid's opening, and all that sort of thing. Um, I did uh, a long time ago. I tried to dig it out to, to show you if we had time at the uh, at the end, but well, when when we was at one of our conferences in Iceland, I, t I took one of the, the geezer, geyser, doing its thing, and I just set a camera off to burst mode, and then using Object 2VR, added all the images, so you could move the mouse up and down and see the geyser firing off, but each frame was a high quality. You could zoom in and see the water droplets, and it was a very high quality, so that's the reason why I did that, rather than just taking a video, because with a video, you can't zoom in and get that sort of detail. Um, you could with this. So, yeah, I mean, do, do, do we have... Um, uh, guides on this um, I'm not sure if we are going to or not I, 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 I can't remember but um, certainly um, the the manufacturers of the turntables um, will probably have some guides on theirs but you know it is it is basically a case of just you know having an object and setting up your camera and taking the pictures and just obviously moving the object to create the image sequence um, that's as far as I can say really if uh, but I really don't know how far we're we going to on our on our end on our website um, because obviously it's like panoramic photography and Pano 2VR. You know, we, we, the assumption is that the image is already taken and you bring it into Pano 2VR. The assumption here is the image is already taken. You're bringing them into Object 2VR, but where that changes with the Object 2VR Studio, that then links up to your camera and turntable and then that does the capturing and bringing it in. But that is for another webinar on another day. <sighs> Sorry, I yeah, <laughs> went into no, one there, that. but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think in general the um, photography part is a little bit out of our scope. Yeah. Um, but uh, the yeah, there are um, there are definitely um, uh, tutorials on on YouTube on how to capture three hundred and sixty imagery. I'm going to put into the chat a link to our own documentation on how you and how you can capture images and. I think in our future webinars, uh, Martin will show you how to capture. Is that right? Are we going to go over it capturing is, in general? I, I think what we're going to do f uh, from memory and looking at the list of webinars that we want to do, we want to introduce the skin editor and dive in a little bit more with that. Um, we want to have a look at the pro and I think we'll be leaving the studio version later because once you've mastered everything, um, say mastered, but, but once you're used to using Object 2 VR, then you know each webinar with each version we just bring on um, uh, a new feature basically pro has got more buttons just up here to do some bits and pieces with um, and studio will have a couple more buttons that will we, we, where you set up um, the uh, the capturing so I think it's probably to the latter part of the webinars I'm not a hundred percent sure it really does depend on you guys it depends on the questions we're getting um, we've sort of marked out three webinars we're going to do and then left it open really for what the questions are we're getting and that's really going to shape the next set of webinars going forward so yeah True. yeah but for now yeah if you're looking for um, tutorials or instruction there we do have documentation on that and we will be doing more webinars and um, and actually I just put a link into the chat and I see that someone had asked uh, uh, Sebastian had asked a question in the chat while I was there, and we can answer that quickly because um, the question is if we can use so Nodal Ninja it. Mecca with Object 2 VR, and the answer is oh yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, indeed. Yeah. Had a play. <laughs> um, um, so the next question comes from Serge, and uh, the question is can we change the color of the hotspots um, of the info hotspots because uh, they're only red. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, the 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 point hotspots in the viewer are just um, representative of what will show on the output, and the info hotspots can the colors can be changed in the output um, panel. Depend if you you can you can do that in the skin. So the, uh, the whatever the hotspot is on the output when you export it, 
can be any color you wish, not in this particular skin. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was just, just going to demonstrate that, but 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 not in this particular one. Obviously, the the, the last two we've looked at, it had yeah. the accents. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the feather um, here. I mean, we could have it. I don't know. Let's do red. Right. This be really gory. But the but in the viewer, it's true. Only the the those hot spots so. in the viewer are red. Yeah. Uh, so, and those uh, currently cannot be changed, which m may or may not be a problem if you have, uh, oh. you know, a, a red um, Vespa or the same color Vespa, um, and it makes it a little bit hard maybe to see those uh, hot spots. Yeah. But well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, it's only red when they're active, right? If you if you if you deactivate it, then it's blue. So, um, but they but they're just place. It's just yeah. It's just for the viewer um, in Object Two VR. The actual output's a different story. Um, when we um, look into the skin, because um, we're going to be looking into the skin in the next webinar and building some of our own hotspots, um, and you can change the colours there, and you can do what you want. You can really really customise it. Um, so, but yeah, this is the, these colours you're seeing in the viewer is just purely for when you're building and not for the output. Yeah, and Serge is saying that um, they're the customers, they want it in their own colors. Well, that's what you can do in the skin editor. You can customize that to be whatever color your customers want um, that's available in the web. <laughs> you can make it. So, and right now we're just showing you uh, what we offer as built in, but of course you, you can change these um, uh, into any color. And like Martin said, in the upcoming webinars, we'll, we'll go, We'll really um, dive deep into this and, and show how that can be done. Absolutely. If you and Absolutely. if if you're if you're impatient for that, uh, you can always check um, also for Pano Two VR stuff. The skin is the same and um, it's kind of the same, not really, but the um, you can use that as a um, maybe some help for that. Um, the next question uh, from Federico: When I use multiple hotspots at the same time, what color is highlighted? So, mm. um, sorry, I, I, um, from using multiple hotspots at the same time. So what, what different hotspots? I don't know. Cause I'm maybe a, you can, right, oh wait, okay. there's a, there might be a little bit, uh, in the light table in the frame area. Right. Okay. So when you have, when the no no uh, all this is doing is because because you select the hotspot that you want to look at in the um, hotspot list and then that shows in the light table which images has that particular hotspot so if you've got ten different the yellow hotspots, the yellow is the yellow. are all the and then the the green is the current one yeah the green is the current sorry so it's the yellow ones that show you um, the images that has that particular highlighted hotspot what 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 we'll do is if I remember of course is when we've added a few more hotspots because that's what we want to do is build that project we started with so pop up videos and PDFs and all that sort of stuff so when we've done that we'll have a little bit more in this list and then we can show that in more detail but basically you 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 see in the light table the highlighted or selected point hotspot so if you had say five or six in this particular image you would select one of those and then you'll see which image which images that particular hotspot appears in so but it, it is done by the list the the actual list triggers this so you select which hotspot you want to know is in what images if that makes that clearer I think so, and it was clear clear to me, but that's, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, let's see. And uh, Florian is asking, will there be a market for skins and other templates? Would it be, would it, uh, would make it easier to kickstart projects? Uh, uh, yeah, you can, you can, uh, Yes. <laughs> in the skin, you can create components and you can share them, you can sell them, you can do whatever you want. You can, uh, we, there are many people uh, using Pano 2 VR who build custom skins for Pano 2 VR. And uh, yeah, so there, it's, there is a market for it. There are people doing it for Pano 2 VR and there's no reason why you can't do it for Object 2 VR. We, well. we, so. we do actually have, if we go to Safari and go into the forum, 
we do have the f uh, f uh, we have user design skins so people that want to put their own skins in for free um, they can um, we also have um, the components forum uh, we've obviously added a lot of components there with each of the forums you should see an index page so it gives you some idea of what's sitting in there so these are all the uh, components that can be used with um, various uh, uh, builds of Pano 2 VR this will um, will obviously get a new one for object 2 VR um, I'm not sure if we'll just add object 2 VR for this or what we may do is under the object 2 VR um, forum have its own components not sure how we're going to go along with that because obviously object 2 VR 4 uh, with its new skin editor brings a whole node a whole load of new features um, so we're still sort of working that one out especially with the forum but um, yeah you know you can see straight away in the forum which is accessible to everybody um, as far as a marketplace is concerned um, we have uh, we have customers that build and sell their own skins from their own websites. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and we do actually have uh, in, our, um, in our FAQ page um, a link to where you can see a list of where these people are and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, but yeah, but but we're not actually going to set up from Garden Gnome Software's website a shop where you can purchase stuff from. Well, not in the near future anyway. Um but who knows what happens, you know, but <laughs> Never I, I, know, but, that's, but, but that's it. Oh yeah. <laughs> and um, some people have added some links to Florian's question. Uh, thanks for adding those. But uh, the general you know, question is, can you bring in your own designs? Can you, can you bring in whatever you want? And, and the answer is yes. Uh, Absolutely. So um, there's no limitation in the design of the skin or the overlay. Uh, it, just your imagination, really. Absolutely. So, um, Absolutely. Well, what, 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 what I would say um, is, you know, the, the next webinar is the introduction to the screen and you'll be seeing a lot of your questions being answered there, I think. Um, so what I'll say to you is, look, make sure that you come along for the next webinar um, and ask your questions and I'm sure everything will be revealed. But with this webinar, what we're trying to do is stick to, you know, um, not dive too deep into the skin editor because that's what we're, we're going to be doing next time round. Um, so yeah, um, let's, let's try and keep on topic with this, I think. Yeah. And I think I just, to, I just want to, um, point out that the skins and like the controllers and everything here that is, that, that Martin is showing was built in the skin editor and that's free for you to use. And you can see exactly how it's built. You can use those, um, graphics everything is there nothing's hidden from you you can use it you can change it um yeah so it's all been yeah <laughs> it's all there so if you're if you're looking for a place to start we give you a starting um template to work with and then you can build off of it if you want absolutely but, uh, um yeah. yeah, I think we can move on. Yep. Yeah, no, <laughs> but no, yeah, no. make sure you come to the to the later uh, um, uh, webinars and uh, for the skin editor. I think you'll be. Yeah, I, I I I think for for the questions that have been asked, and the next webinar is is very good. Um, I I think we've chosen the right one to go like start with the skin editor because the questions are leading to that because obviously we've we've built very quickly an output we're going to be adding obviously more out uh, uh, hot spots and making this look you know and give it the wow factor um but then yes the customization of the skin so that's going to be next webinar so yeah be there or be square as they say um so right okay um well what i'll do then is i'll i'll crack on and we'll add some more point hotspots and show the different ways of doing that. Um, I'll be happy for me to carry on, Karen. Yeah, yep, go for it. Okay, right then. Um, so as we've said, we've added a hotspot and we did it the long way around. So what we did, just to recap, was we selected hotspots, we selected a point hotspot, we created one and then we defined what it was going to do. Um, you can see we've got various already pre-built um, types so images videos um, if I was to select video we can then have different types of video is it going to be a Vimeo video is it a YouTube is it a, a video that you've added like a mpeg4 video for example um, so yeah there's 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 lots of little options there um, but the steps were 
select hotspots, add a point hotspot, define what it does, and then add the instances of the hotspot in the image it was supposed to be in. Right, so that's what we did. Now what we're gonna do now is show you an easier way of doing it. So I'm just going to double click just to reduce the size. And I'm gonna to go to the project and grab a, I don't know, let's see what we're going to do. Let's, let's, let's have a look. Let's grab a PDF, here we go. So I'm gonna grab a PDF and just drag and drop it in. So I'm just gonna drop it in. And there it is. Now what that's done, and why I wanted to do it the long way around first, what it's done is automatically switch the hotspot mode, point hotspot mode. It's added the point hotspot to the first image as well as defining what it is and added the file path to it. So the only thing we have to do now is just add the title. Um, so let's just put, I don't know, um, Vespa Alex 125. Let's have that as the, as, as the title. Okay, so that's now all defined. And, it's, and we've added the first instance into the first image. So what I could do is say, right, I don't want this to be seen in all images. I just want to just define it in a few at the front. So when I rotate, we can see I've got this nice curve going on here. I don't know if you can see that um, of, of the hotspot. So this is this little button down here, as I said. And let's go back round again and what we'll do is because the bike is then or the scooters turned away from it that's going to be the last one i'm adding because technically it's hiding around the corner so when i click on the first hotspot we added you can see here are the yellow thumbnails to say that's where that hotspot is and when we click on the second one you can now see where these or where, where that hotspot has been now added to the individual images Okay, so that's our PDF. So let's have a look at the output. So again, just click the cog, uh, which is create the output. And there it is. And you can see that we've got Vesper LX125. And when I click that, there is the PDF, which is the brochure for it. And that appears only in the images we've selected. All right. And as we rotate it round, as we get to the back of the scooter, you'll see that the camera icon for the image comes around. Okay. So that's how we created that with just a drag and drop. Um, we can do this as well with other things. So let's just, um, I've got a YouTube video here. So let's just open with Safari. Um, and this is the YouTube. I can't remember the first. Right, so I'm gonna, <laughs> don't allow, don't want it to see me. Right, okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put that to one side and I'm gonna stop this because it's been annoying right so what we can do here is highlight the address bar now this is pretty cool I like this is if you um, let's let's select an image I want it to appear in first so let's select the center one and with the oh, with the address bar selected I can drag and drop the video there there we go and when I've done that not only has it added the um, video ID it's also added the title so let's just tidy that up and it's added that again because we dragged and dropped it's already added uh, the first instance into that um, image right so let's close uh, YouTube and then we can just now use the left and right arrow keys to uh, define that hotspot in the images I want that's as far as I want to go there and we can whiz back and just add a few more there. No, I probably won't want it on there either. Right, okay, so that's that one. So when again, select that, you can now see clearly which images have got that particular hotspot. So that, as I said, it, you know, you can now see when you select which hotspot you're, you're, you, you want to look at, you can see which images are, or that hotspot, or, or that hotspot instance is in. All right, okay, so let's click output. Let's see what we got. Okay, so we've now got our video, and when we click that, there we go. So this is our um, Piaggio Vespa LX 125 promo video. There you go. All right, so this is adding, as I say, we've added a PDF, 
we've added a video we've added a um, an image you can add um, uh, URLs and pop up um, uh, 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 um, uh, websites and things like that um, right so right so that's basically um, our project that's what we did um, I think what I'll do is I'll just add one more hotspot um, let's see which hotspot I'm going to do let's do the speedometer um, that's uh, a good one it was quite funny because I actually wrote down speedo uh, which is short in the UK which I would use for a speedometer and and I was questioned what well, I'm going to put a pair of swimming shorts on a on a, on a Vespa. Well, no, that was just our <laughs> that was just our shortcut. Anyway, um, so I'm going to add that. So again, we've got the um, hotspot defined. It's an image. Um, this skin ID that will uh, explain what it is. I'll explain what that is in the next webinar with skins. But hence its name, skin ID. Um, but but this time round, we're just going to. Um, just carry on with the drag and drop. So, speed emitter. It's already got the image, and now what I want to do is just define which um, images will have this. Let's just do that. And yeah, I'll leave it there. Now, the thing here is obviously what we want to do is make sure that these two hotspots. Are not overlapping that's just you know that's just something that you need to be mindful of when you're adding these um, but the good thing is you could not you know and that particular scene not add one but now you can see we've got those two there and we've now got the speedometer okay so that's basically our project built and as I say we've got all the controls we can zoom in and zoom out um, what I will do I will do because I wanted to do this um, controller uh he says no we've got the controller um let's just have a look let's just have a look right i got my left and right okay now i did say at the very start um that in the image uh, in in the viewing parameters we could not have wrap because at the end of the day we can go right to the end of it and wrap around and hence why we get this full rotation okay but what we can do is again if we select the uh, image um, so let's come out of hotspots select the image get into the viewing parameters I'm going to disable wrap and you'll see what's going to happen now is with the arrows because I'm at the very extreme image this one's grayed out I can't go any further all right I can't drag it any further because it's the star image but I can go back we can click around and when we get to the very end it stops so there you can see we've got our limits we can't get anything further than that so what 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 that's good for is it could be that you only have several images like that yeah so from there to there um, and not have the full rotation so you can still use this within object 2 vi don't don't feel compelled that you need to be able to have the whole thing rotating um, and as I said before you know you don't even have to have an object rotating it can be a static object and you're just animating something with it um, but anyway, so that's that's basically the output. Um, now, what I want to show you from now, and I is basically let's have a look uh, on my little list, and it's the last thing on my list. Um, I did say I've got a Q and A before this one, so I'm just going to do a, a quick shout out to Karen. Do we have any um, any questions whilst we were doing that? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um... <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm too busy looking at what I'm doing and not seeing the, the webinar questions or the Q&As. Yeah, <laughs> no, okay. it's okay. And it's a, it's a variety of questions and I'm sitting here thinking about how um, we should go through them. Um, I want to start with Serge's question, mm -hmm. who is asking to please show an info hotspot with a green color. Can you just quickly change to um the venice or the feather yeah one of them whatever you change you can change the color to right, i think okay. it's um uh, hang on let's change the skin to feather feather box and you'll see that it's got accent color modified mm -hmm. so we can so, it's already green so let's make it a different green <laughs> click okay and then add an info do you have did you add an info hotspot yet i haven't but i can um in fact 
In fact, he says, um, let's have a think, let's have a think. Because what I have in my little, uh, little text box was a little s snippet of text. There we go. So I'm going to copy that. All right. And what we will do now then is select, uh, let's select an image to work with. Select point hotspots, create a point hotspot. We are going to select uh, info. And we will select um, Vespa Alex. And I can paste in that text. Okay, we can even open it up to a text editor if you wish. But we're going to paste in that text. And technically, what I need to do now is just add the instances of the point hotspot. So let's just add, um, actually, what might be really cool to do as well. Um, if I add it there, right, um, we've got reuse hotspot in all columns. Um, which is another option. It's a bit techy, it's a bit geeky, and perhaps I shouldn't be doing it, but hey-ho, we're here, and you asked the question, so green light for me. Um, so I'm going to add that, and what that's going to do is that's going to stay static. It's not going to move. It's not going to move with the object, It's and it's going to be used in every single instance. So let's just create an output, and it also saves me adding more instances. And you can see it's it's there, it's at the top. And when we click that, all right, okay, um, let's change the skin to something that's not, uh, no, cause we, we, no, because we want that skin, don't we? Let's move that to there. All right, because this particular skin, the um, the the pop-outs, as it were, so coming in a little box. So here we go. So there's the uh, green button, green um, uh, accent, and yeah. Now... What I can't show you, which that was actually probably a bad idea to be fair. So let's correct that. So let's let's not worry about that. So let's get rid of that one. I'm going to add it to um, say the front. This this silver bit on the front mudguard or fender, whatever part of the world you come from. So I'm going to double click and add it there. Um, let's I tell you what. Let's get back into the hotspot list and make sure that I'm on the right one, which I am. Good. And let's just add a couple more instance. Oh, hang on, it's still got. Uh, right, I don't want to use it in all columns, right, so let's just, so come back here, let's move over there, next image, double click, next image, double click, uh, let's come back and add one there and add one there, and what that should give us now is why you would choose this skin over the skin we've just had because this skin lets those things track or lets the info pop up track the image so you can see that there okay um, it's a bit translucent um, but uh, yeah you can see that and with the other skin the Nito which is what we were using you'll see that it doesn't it just opens up a pop-up so it doesn't matter what it's doing so that's so there so that's that's also part of the different flavors if you like of skins and the different types of skins with their different types of features um but yeah just a quick show there greenpoint hotspot info um in this particular skin this is what it looks like so and in the other one it was green mm. so right perfect that's yeah and i think that's um serge is bringing up a good point in the previous version in object 2 vr3 you couldn't just simply change those hotspots like you can now and i think that's the beauty of the new Oh. If you've been working with Object 2 VR before and now you're working with it now, it's a huge, like, it's a huge step in in building those skins. There's a lot more you can do. <laughs> so, a lot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's, it's, so, it's, it's night and day. They, they are yeah. so different. Okay, I'm going to move on because there are a lot of questions. Right, okay, cool. Um, so, let's see. I'll go back up to the top here. Um, Hannah's asking if it's possible to work with PNGs and to keep transparency so it's possible to lay the um, the 360 over a um, website layout. So the actual images, the object images, can those be transparent? Is that what I think that's what he's asking? Um, website image? Web, uh, um, 
Uh, you can use transparencies um, or, or you can use PNG images uh, within Object 2 VR. Um, yes is the answer to that. Yes is the answer to that. <laughs> um, you, yeah. But can, can it be overlaid? Can you have a, um, can the background of the HTML page be transparent? I think so. Um, yes. I mean, basically, uh, the, um, I mean, with, we actually had a project with Pano 2 VR where we actually had a transparent background with an object. So all you saw was the object. It was just sitting in a panorama. So the answer to that question is yes, we can do all of that. Um, but the caveat there is, is we generally use multi-resolution to start with. But if you're going to be using transparent PNGs, it has to be single resolution. So you're, you're going to be limited on the size and the performance. If the, if, the, if, if the sizes of the images are too big, of course, what we're doing here is going through an image sequence. So if the browser's got to download some hefty images, that could be an issue. But other than that, um, with standard size images like this, then it should be no problem. But as I say, the only caveat is it's got to be single res or single resolution rather than use the shortcut. Um, but yeah, it's single resolution. But yes, we can do it. Yeah. Okay. Then Florian. Hi, Florian. For now. Can you move the images with a swipe? You mean on, on, on mobile, right, Florian? And I think so. It's yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got pinch zoom in and out and you've got, um, as we can click and drag, you can just use your finger to rotate it. So yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. And Matt Smith, hi. Can you jump into the image edit functions of the new version? <laughs> the brightness, contrast, wobble, crop and such? <laughs> uh, that's when we cover pro. This is very yeah. much, we're staying with light at the moment that yeah. doesn't have those. We will totally go into those, yeah, yeah in the next in the upcoming webinars and. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, our thought process is get everyone started straight away, um, seeing the hotspots and the pre-configured stuff with all the pre-configured skins, um, then introduce the skin editor, and then once you've got those under your belt and building your own objects with your own skins, um, then we're going to look at the more advanced features. Um, so I think that I think it's the third one in. So we're doing this one. Intro to the skin is next one, and then the next one is the pro features. So we're looking at the image processing, and then so yeah. But TBA yeah. on when that's happening. Um, we actually yeah. have the next one, the skin one. Is it the? Was it the? It's in December. I can't. I think it's the eleventh or something. I really can't remember. Off the yeah, top of my head. the next one's in a few weeks, mid December. Yeah, yeah a couple of weeks. Um, I mm -hmm. think, but. But yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. We, I, I, I don't think we've put a stamp on when we're doing it, but it's in our list of webinars to do. And that's already defined as the next or, or the third one in. We've just got around the a third one in there. That one hasn't been defined exactly when we'll yeah. probably in the new year. It so, depends. Yeah. yeah, but we'll but we will definitely get into that because it's uh, that stuff's also pretty cool. So um, next question. Hi, Scott. Um, Feature request for hotspots. Uh, your so the answer to your feature request, uh, I'll just say right now, is uh, it's on the list. But I'll, I'll read it out um, so everyone can hear it. Uh, add a hotspot inter interpolation feature that will allow you to identify positions of a given hotspot in a small handful of images in a sequence, and the and object two VR can then interpolate. The positions for intermediate frames, and as he states, this could this could help uh, with this could help smooth out and speed up hotspot positioning, particularly on object movies with larger number of image frames. So yes, this is on the list of our our, our big to do list, and thanks for that. Thanks for that request. <laughs> yeah, thanks for yeah. that. All right. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. No, it's, it it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, no, yeah. good. Uh, okay. So, is it um, anonymous? Is it also possible to? Is it possible in this version to insert several rows of images to achieve a three D effect? Yeah, um, yes. I, I'm, I'm assuming you mean like looking at the top and below and what all that. Yep. Um, this is actually this scooter is actually that, uh, but this is just a single row from it. Um, 
just quickly we can do this really if we go yeah to the, there's you can see on our on our website we have some yeah let's just, just have a quick row. let's just have a quick is that that no i didn't want that one sorry uh let's go to that one yeah there we go so we go products object to vr oh hang on uh, other one yeah beta four go down go down here it is Boop. and here so you've got that there you go so what we're doing today is just using a single row so this is a single row but these are the other rows i think it's got six rows to this i can't remember but it's it's um yeah there you go okay federico is the description field also editable in with html code uh yeah i, I think not HTML, but it's in Markdown. Well, I guess you can use HDR, but uh, HTML. But yeah, it's also a Markdown field. Can you What's open up? Can, 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 you that can you go to the user data fields, please? Right. Yeah. No. Um. Uh. Uh. uh um. Right. Okay. Or go to uh, a hotspot. Hang on. Or, hotspot. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. Let's go to user data. Um. Because I haven't filled in any. Any, any of these fields. Um. Just have this little pencil yeah. thing. So when you pop it open, you get your text editor. Yeah. And you can either use a visual text as so you can type some text and add bold and things like that. Um, actually, we could possibly. Or Federica, are you asking? Can you? Are you asking? Do you want to change the um, uh, the font or the text using HTML, or we can add HTML code inside? So I guess, but, but the having, answer is yes. Yeah, but I was going to say, having said that, I mean, with with the text boxes. Um, you can add your HTML tags and HTML as well. So if you want to use like brackets and bold and italics, yes, you can do all of that um, if you've already got it predefined. Um, so if you've got it all written down somewhere, say in a plain text editor and you just copy and paste in, it will still work. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Federico. I think we got that. And um, I do believe we, we answered all the questions. So... Uh, now you can move on. <laughs> right, okay. Well, I only have one last thing. I mean, basically, we've built what we've set out to build. You know, we, we uh, build. We, we, we've got our object. We can spin it around. Um, we've added some hotspots. We've set some viewing parameters. We can either lock it um, or we can get it to go all the way around. So we've actually covered quite a lot. But what we haven't done yet is um, uh, the output. I mean, basically, the output is... Let's have a look. Um in the project here it is it's a folder now what you would normally do is if you have your own hosting and everything else you can upload the 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 folder and you can you know uh, point to the html page with inside this folder and open up the project exactly like that okay um by the way i'll just add a little caveat here is um my mac is set up so i can do that i can open up an html page directly from the folder normally you won't be able to do that because of local file restrictions but hey ho once it's uploaded to a server we're good to go however to make that even simpler we actually have our gnome hosting um so yeah a garden gnome hosting it's basically it's a little button here um when you purchase um object 2 vr uh 4 we're going to give you 90 days free hosting um uh, or free access to the hosting to our cloud I call it hosting. It's cloud, GNOME cloud. I think that's the name of it, GNOME cloud. Um, the details can be found on our website. So let's just go to that. So window. Boom. So if you want to know more about this, go to GNOME cloud. These are the um, uh, things that you can uh, do with it. And it's the how to's and dashboards. But basically, once it's all set up now, I don't think I'm set up in this particular account, but we'll find out um, if I click upload. Um, you would so yes, I want to do that. It's going to kick me out. It's going to say web browser. Oh, I am logged in. So let's go to projects. Oh, I've reached my limit on this particular account. Good one. Um, uh, this one's good to go. So I'm just going to accept the terms and I can upload. And now what's going to happen is we're going to have a little look at what's on the server. And if there's any, uh, if it's already there, it'll just update obviously, but it's not there at all as it's uploading you'll see that we've got this little link saying that this particular project is now linked to a project in the cloud and when it's uploaded um it's actually considering the the amount of tiles it's because it's multi-res it's actually as you can see it's screaming along there quite nicely so it's not going to take that long 
um, to upload. But when it does, it'll pop open the um, uh, uh, web page and we'll see where it is. So let's just have a quick look. Boom, there it is. So there's the object. This is live now. Um, and um, so that's the web page for it. If we go to our uh, cloud button, you can see it's here. And if I right button click, we can go to share. And you can see that we've got a share link for it. So we can copy that and send that to someone. We've got an embed, uh, an embed uh, code that we can copy and, and give to someone. So if you've got something like a web space, like a, sorry, a website like Squarespace that doesn't allow you to upload stuff, you can host it with us and just copy and paste that straight into Squarespace. Boom, someone can see it. And you can even download a QR code um, so someone can, on their mobile phone, click and then they can see the object. So this is our cloud hosting. Uh, it's really useful for something like objects. And also the other thing with this, which I want to add, um, is you know our cloud hosting can be for your customer. So your customer could purchase it and use it, give you the access to it. You do all of their objects, upload it, but then they look after it themselves. So it's not as though they don't have control of it. So they, you know, it, it's 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 very very versatile. So in it lends itself to objects very nicely because obviously, um, you know, objects tend to be um, uh, hosted elsewhere and 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 put on different websites. Um, we've had so many requests for this uh, with Object Two VR Three. So now Object Two VR Four's got it. It's all there and ready for you to use. Okay, so that's um, basically uh, the hosting. If we have a look, um, he says up here, uh, Object 2VR Cloud, you even get a dashboard. Let's have a quick look at the dashboard. So this is what it looks like online. Um, so you can see some of the projects that I've got. Here you can create your own portfolio page. Um, let's have a look, have I created one? No, I haven't. Okay, not not in this particular account. Uh, but yeah, you can have your own uh, portfolio page. It, it's actually very good. Um, I know I'm saying that, but you know, it is. <laughs> Don't get away from it. And it and what it also does is it saves a lot of headaches. If you just want to create an object and create an output and show someone, this is ideal because you just create it once you've built it and you're happy with it. Upload it to the cloud give them the link, say, here you go, this is what we got, are you happy with it? And it allows them to critique it as well, um, remotely without having to send files and get file access and all of the palaver that goes with that. So this makes life very, very simple. Okay, well, I think that's everything covered. Um, uh, so well, everything for today. Well, everything in this <laughs> webinar, yes. Um, so yeah, quite right, quite right. Well said. Um, so yeah, so everything covered in this webinar that we wanted to. Um, yeah, um, throw it open one more time. Uh, have, we, have we got any last last minute questions that we uh, we can answer or? Oh yeah, yeah, we've got. They keep coming. <laughs> uh, so Federico has a very good question for any of those who are familiar with Pano 2 VR. Yeah. Um, he's asking if the skin editor shares the same features as Pano 2 VR with in regards to using variables and doing animations and, and all of that. And the, the short answer is yes. Yeah, it is um, very similar, if not what, 95% similar, I guess? I mean, there's some things that there, there, there are, are there the are, variables, there are the yeah. logic blocks, there are the... Um, They're all there. There uh, are some differences yeah. Um, yeah. In, in the way that, you know, the actual logic block that determines have you got to the end of a rotation, that's in Object 2 VR. It may find itself in Pano 2 VR later on. I don't know. But, but there are some slight, slight, but... I think the majority of what you can do in Pano 2 VR uh, uh, and in the skin editor, you know, is it can translate to this as well and vice versa. But just be aware that there are some slight differences at this time. But who knows? That may all change. Um, you know, it, with the advances of, you know, Object 2 VR and Pano 2 VR, we're, they're, they're, they're pretty, they're, they're sort of becoming aligned. And so who knows? 
but at the moment very similar yes <laughs> leave it as that okay yeah <laughs> uh so uh search is asking what i assume um asking about automation basically so exporting um in an automated fashion using droplets uh and the answer is the droplet is not ready yet i think um so it's on it's on our to-do list and uh yeah in in the future you if you're familiar with uh, um with object 2 vr previously you could use a droplet to um, automate output so if you have a, a whole bunch of uh spins to make you can drop these onto the droplets and and let object 2 vr go to town and uh so that is on our to-do list right. Right, right, right. and uh let's see here and serge yes you can use the old version next to the new new version so you uh, you can have them both running side by side um can you use the droplet like you can't use them together but they they can both exist they can exist on your on your machine at the same time and yeah um matt is asking about the garden home package format uh, output and asking um if you can put the package outside of the html5 folder created for that package uh, for that ggpkg i'm not quite sure i understand your question um maybe package, you can elaborate the, yeah the package it, is uh, uh, is an output basically the package is a compressed output of the output folder and that works with our desktop and mobile package viewers um uh, so if i click that it'll just say vespa um, package it produces and that's what the package looked like if i double click it it opens up our this is our desktop package viewer and you've got that the package viewer itself can have kiosk mode and things like that the package viewer if that's for the a desktop, separate app by the way that you yeah, download and install on your machine absolutely it's a separate app. and and again if we just um new window here products you'll see that you've got your package viewer for your android and ios and your package viewer for your desktop and this is what it's looking for it's looking for that package we also have um uh, plugins for wordpress uh, joomla and uh, drupal is it i think um where um you can upload the package to that and it automatically puts it into your well I say automatically put it doesn't automatically put it into your page but you can upload it to it and it puts it into a fashion into the media folder of those websites where you can just then add them to a page or a post or whatever um so we actually have our own plugin for that so the package is quite a universal and quite a, you know it's, it's quite a good little thing but what it does it gives you a single file format for what is a bunch of files yeah so you can see there's a load of files in the output where the package single file format so yeah oh uh, yeah okay yeah matt, matt clarified his question yeah that that ggpkg file it can live on its own anywhere so you can send it to your client and if they have the if they have the the app on their machine then on their computer they can open it up there so it can it is um it can live it's on a, its own. It, it can yeah, be outside of the file. output. Yeah, yeah, standalone file. So, and and as Karen's just said, if 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 they've got the package viewer installed on their machine or on their machine, you just double click it, and it just opens. So that makes it sharing, or you use the hosting, <laughs> the home cloud. It's even easier. Send them a link, and they don't even have to install anything. So there you go. Okay, sorry, just trying to, um, ah, you you mean, Matt, you want the ggpkg to be sent to a whole other different folder on output, not in the same output folder as the HTML. So I think, um, yeah, yeah, because you can, you can yeah. add, a, maybe well, you, you want, if you it. want to do that, yeah, yeah, you can change it, or you could even um, create a different output template, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, you can do that. Um, could you? Don't know. No, I actually think the default is to open it up in there, but then obviously in the save dialog box, you can change its its destination. I'm not sure if a template. I don't think a template would allow you to do that. I think. No. Yeah, that was. Yeah. I think. Hello, Karen. Lost you. 
<laughs> Am I back? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, um, <laughs> cut myself off there. Uh, and Thomas was reminding me that in version three, when you would export the the package format, it would um, always be in that same folder. So I think now you can you can change this folder. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that's the. Okay. Maska, Roger, thank you. <laughs> Roger that. <laughs> cool. All right. So uh, now I th now I think I think we're we're through. Um, yeah. I think that's it. So, any last words, Martin? <laughs> Only to thank everybody for turning up, and uh, you know, thank you for your time today. Um, webinars are, you know, they are time consuming by nature and but I'm just hope that you enjoyed what you see and hope that you like our first outing of Object 2 VR for webinars and we wish to see you again in the future that's uh, so that's that's it from me over to you Karen yeah thanks a lot for joining us and uh, yeah of course this is not this is still in beta and we have a lot more that to come and uh, yeah we just want you guys to get started working with it and uh, hope to see you see you later and if you have any ideas or more questions you can always reach us at our email support at ggnome.com and uh, yeah glad to hear from you or anywhere else on the social media sphere where you find us <laughs> yeah okay so thank you very much and All i'll right. say goodbye goodbye <laughs>